reading French Cinema, The First Wave, 1915 through 1929 by Richard Abel, published in Princeton University Press. Introduction to the French film industry. At the outset, a question. How was the French film industry structured during the period from 1915 to 1929? And how did it function? Question mark. Like the cinemas of other advanced industrial societies, by then the French cinema had become a mass art constituted from a new techno technological apparatus of perception and representation and thus had acquired some degree of cultural importance. That importance derived in part from its emergence within a number of already existing social structures, each of which helped shape its organization and operation as an industry. But the shaping of the French film industry was unique. A good way of grasping that shaping process, Gerard Talon suggests, quote, is to put in play once more the series of economic and ideological mutations that made the French film industry produce the films that it produced, end quote. To begin reconstructing this period of the French cinema's history, therefore, let me sketch a framework of those mutations. The years between the beginning of the Great War and the end of the 20s can be divided politically into four more or less distinct periods. The war years were dominated nominally by the radicals, who had controlled the French legislature and its cabinet ministry since 1899. The real government leaders, however, were the moderate Raymond Poincaré and the hitherto ceremonial post of president, who had become the symbol of the, quote, nationalist revival, end quote, just prior to the war and the aging tiger, Prime Minister George Clemenceau, who for the last two years of the war turned France into a virtual civilian dictatorship. In 1919 through 1920, partly as a result of internal divisions that racked the radicals and the socialists, a coalition of rightist parties and moderates for the first time since the 1870s, achieved a brief, clear-cut majority in the National Assembly. This Bloc National, or Horizon Bleu, coalition soon gravitated into a moderate radical alliance, led most prominently by Poincaré from 1922 to 1924. It adopted a rather harsh foreign policy, especially toward German war reparations, and held strictly conservative domestic positions. The elections of 1924, however, gave power to a cartel de gauche organized by left-leaning radicals and socialists. This government reversed its predece predecessors' policies by adopting Aristide Briand's strategy of reproachment by Germany by or with Germany and by half heartedly advancing Prime Minister Edouard Harriot's program of economic reforms. In 1926, in the face of escalating inflation and a quote capital strike, end quote, partly occasioned by overextended government loans for reconstruction. A radical moderate coalition, the Union Nationale, assumed political control of the cabinet ministries, leading this, quote, restoration of confidence, end quote, once again, was Prime Minister Poincaré, who quickly reestablished more conservative positions on internal matters, but who also allowed Briand to continue his foreign policy of reproachment. This return to an, quote, era of stability, end quote, was formalized in the elections of 1928. Despite these political changes, which, as we will see, 
did have a considerable effect on the Frank cinema throughout the period. The government's attitude toward the film industry was consistently one of benign neglect. As a new industry, like the more important synthetic textiles industry, for example, it was expected to make its own way. That attitude was particularly telling in the areas of film production financing in the regulation or lack of regulation of film imports. France's economic development during this period coincided in part with these political changes. Inflation and unemployment, for instance, were highest in the years immediately following the war from 1919 to 1921 and in the middle of the decade from 1924 to 1926. At no time, however, did either reach the disastrous levels experienced in Germany. Furthermore, the revolutionary dreams of the working class movement were shattered by the failure of the 1920 general strike and by the bitter ideological debates that split the Confederation General du Travail and the Socialists and gave rise to a fledgling Communist Party and its trade union arm. The Confederation General du Travail Unitaire, but the seeming stability of the period could not mask a persistent sense of stagnancy and a fear that the country was on the verge of bankruptcy. In 1919, for instance, industrial production was no more than 60% of what it had been in 1914, and much of the country's extensive foreign investments had been lost, particularly in Russia. The following decade was marked, especially compared to Germany, by the slow development of key industries, for example, that of hydroelectric power and the concomitant commercial and domestic uses of electricity. The cautious reinvestment strategies in the resistance to new production and marketing strategies that too often characterize this development also showed up in the French film industry. Although the French tended to be chauvinistic in resisting the intervention of foreign enterprises, despite the lack of economic regeneration from within, the French film industry actually encouraged foreign capital and business organizations, almost out of necessity. In the overall economy, however, the industry was small, capital deficient, and played a distinctly minor role in contrast to its American counterpart, which was for some time among the top 40 industries in the United States. Also, in comparison to the Americans, the French film industry structure, structure exhibited much less concentration and vertical integration, and the industry invested much less of its capital in film production and more in distribution and exhibition. Finally, the Great War severely strained the ideological basis or yet yeah, basis of French society. Instead of celebrating its victory after the armistice, France evidenced paradoxically, a national mood of suffering and defeat. Quote, the war played the role of catalyst, end quote, writes Jacques Patat. Quote, it burst the nationalist gut strings. The uniforms and flamboyant rhetoric could no longer hide the shit of the trenches. We were disappointed, disgusted. We had been swindled, end quote. Its economic effects, adds Jose Baldazon, completely undermined, quote, bourgeois morality, end quote, striped or stripped of the ideological trappings that decked out the pre-war Bill Apoke revival, 
the French nation the French nation seemed in search of its own collective identity as a popular spectacle the French cinema gave representation to this search and or as a popular spectacle the French cinema gave representation to this search or re-examination in in operation that was doubly motivated by the industry's own sense of defeat or loss. Before the war, according to then accepted though unreliable statistics, quote, 90% of the films exhibited throughout the world were French films, end quote. By 1919, only 10 to 15% of the films projected in Paris alone were French. Quote, if the French cinema is stripped of its glories, it will perish, end quote, wrote Monsonet. Quote, and we will have to resign ourselves to being a country that no longer makes good films, end quote. Thus, the industry had its own related question of identity to confront. What was or should be French about the French cinema, question mark? Can there be any wonder then that from the beginnings of the Great War to the end of the 1920s, the French cinema found itself in a state of crisis? Year after year, the epithet echoed through the French press devoted to the cinema. Block quote. The crisis preceded the war, which precipitated it rather than being its principal cause. It was inevitable. Henry Diamant Berger, 1919. Cognizant of the pitiful state of our cinema in both men and material, today we must demolish these badly lit enclosed buildings, scrap this obsolete equipment, banish from the screen all that which admits of the theater and promenade, expel the cats and the unfit. Pierre Henry, 1919. The first question posed, what remedies do you recommend for the real crisis of the cinema? Question mark. Rene Jean, 1921. The present situation is clear. We are faced with ruin. Jean Sapin, 1925. It was, or it has become banal and even a bit ridiculous to speak of the crisis of cinema. Herbert, Herbert Revol, 1927. In the flock quotes, despite rather steadily growing box office receipts and intermittent reports of a renaissance of the French cinema, the crisis was perceived as chronic and persistent, infecting all levels of the film industry from production to exhibition. What exactly happened? Question mark. And was the film industry really as more moribund, disorganized, and second or even third rate as was imagined? Question mark. Or could the crisis be read as a sign of healthy ferment? Question mark. To discover more precise answers, to better understand the French cinema of the period, one can begin by looking more closely at the double-edged effect of the war. And I was reading the introduction to the film industry, the French film industry in French cinema, the first wave, 1915 through 1929 by Richard Abel, published by Princeton University Press.